Today we're talking about our plans for 2024, the projects, and a little tweak to our scheduling. So grab something to drink or a cookie to munch on because I know you have leftover Christmas cookies, don't you? We'll see you in just a second. Welcome back to the Shamrock Quilt Studio. Hi, it's a new year and it's time to make a few new changes to our schedule and also a little tweak to what we're doing this year. I've got some great projects lined up and some I'm still trying to decide on, but we've got one starting right now on a Dresden plate project. That's gonna be called Modern Dresden. And we have some projects from 2020. We're gonna to have to do that one over. <clears throat> we also have some projects for 2023 that we really need to work on and work towards getting them finished. Let me show you a couple of those and then I'll tell you what I have planned. First up is one that I've had on my bucket list for years and that's this lovely double wedding ring quilt. Let me open it up a little bit so you can see it. It's really, really pretty, I think. Lots of pinks, pastel colors, a beautiful border, the applique edges, and the, the design that I came up with to extend this just a little bit. This is roughly a queen size quilt, and we've got the whole top finished, and also it has some mitered corners there that seem to be very popular with viewers, but it needs to be sandwiched and quilted and running two projects every, every week for YouTube has not allowed me the time that I need to quilt this. And usually in the colder months, that's when I quilt my larger projects. So we're gonna start working on this one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring uh, one of these two quilts in to quilt beginning in January. And we're gonna have some videos on Wednesdays that show the steps in getting that done, some of the techniques, some of the things you may need to, need to know if you are hand quilting. I know there's a large segment of viewers who only like to machine quilt, or maybe you're the type that likes to send it off and have someone machine quilt it for you. And that's what you really like. I like that too. But I also like the quiet and the solitude of being able to hand quilt. And it's a, a technique that I really enjoy. And having this channel and showing things that I'm doing needs to include what I like as well, right? So I will be showing things on this like how to sandwich it, how to load it on a frame. I have a Grace Easy 3 frame. I think either one of these two projects will fit on it. What I don't know is if I have room in my house to put it someplace that I can videotape when I do. But I think I do, and I'm going to be working out those details really soon. But I'm also going to show you things like how to decide where to quilt, because that is an integral part of your quilt as a whole. How should it be quilted? And I will tell you that for hand quilting, typically we don't hand quilt, or I don't anyway, quite as densely as you may with a machine. Because obviously the machine is making stitches versus you're making stitches, and it takes us longer than the machine. So we're going to talk about where we're going to put the quilting 
And on something like this, that's really important because you want your work to, to really stand out and show the quality of your work. But as an overall, you want a amount of quilting that's pleasing to look at. It's functional, it will hold together, and it really shows off your uh, piecing. Or in this case, for this one, the applique. I'm also going to show you how to use a stencil, how to mark it, when to mark it. Now, if I use the easy, easy, Grace Easy 3 frame, I don't mark until I get ready to quilt it because that frame holds everything very firmly in place. It's not like a hoop where when you move it from place to place, the fabric may change how it's positioned. With the Grace, when you put it on, it stays on and that's how I do that. So you may have a little difference if you're doing something with the hoop. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how I use straight pins as markers to keep up with where I leave it off because usually when I'm quilting something like this, I may work an hour a night on it and then I have to step away and do other things. I can't spend four or five hours quilting. Usually two, three is about all I can get at a at one sitting. So I use quilting straight pins to mark where I work. And then we're going to talk a little bit about some of the little cheater tools that I use to mark to make sure that I am consistent with my stitch length. So we'll talk about all of that stuff on our Wednesday videos. I'm also going to talk on our Wednesday videos about things like binding, binding techniques. What are the, all of the different ways that you can bind a quilt? And what do you know about each one? Now, it's not absolute. It's not everything anybody ever knew about binding, but it's what I know and what I can share with you. And like everything we do here, if you want to share back with me, please do that in a comment. Now, if I find this is too big for my frame, or too big right now for where I can put a frame, it may have to wait. And if that's the case, then we may work on this quilt. This one is smaller. Um, I would prefer to start working on the double wedding ring because I want to start using it. I'd like to be able to put this on my bed, not this spring, but next spring. And for me to be able to quilt it, I need to get going. But if we can't do that, we'll start working on this. And this is the Blue Star project we did this year. Okay, so Wednesdays are going to be about hand quilting, techniques, um, learning information on quilting in general, thread, scissors, uh, binding, maybe what to look for in a backing fabric. We may have an opportunity to talk about piecing backgrounds, um, piecing backing fabrics as opposed to having one background fabric. Lots of opportunities for things to think about that don't involve an actual piecing project. And then Fridays are going to be about piecing the top to quilts. And like I said, we're going to have, we have the um, Dresden plate project that's going to start right away if it hasn't already, depending on when this drops. I have a project I'm calling Be Happy. We'll probably do that in early summer. And then I want to get started on a new EPP project because those are great um, portable projects that you can take with you if you have appointments or children and uh, different kinds of lessons or practices that you can take with you and work uh, on site. And um, that's a good way to optimize the time that you spend waiting. And I have that as well. And then I have some other ideas of maybe some kind of crazy things that I'd like to do that I've been kicking around in my head for almost a year now. So we may do that or we may choose to take on another project. If you've got something you'd like to see, um, 
I'd be interested in thinking about whether that's a good fit for the channel. There are a lot of quilt designs out there that I'm really anxious to do, but I have to know that it's something or I have to, I have to consider whether it's something that I have the time to finish. I don't really want to get involved in something like this maybe right now that's going to be years in the making. I kind of want to um, know that it's something that we can make steady progress on and be able to finish it in a reasonable amount of time. I'd love to do a carpenter's star. I'd love to do a hunter's star. I'd like to do some designing in EPP with, with um, diamonds. That's what I've been looking at recently. Uh, Dear Jane. Dear Jane is one of those bucket list projects that I see going into retirement, starting something like that, and just being able to work on it maybe one block a week until it's done. And there are a lot of blocks, and a lot of those blocks are very difficult. So um, that is definitely a further off project. And I'm sure there are plenty of people doing videos on Dear Jane. So uh, you probably don't need me doing that right now. So we've got a lot of things going on. I did think we were going to do a project on a star, uh, excuse me, on a snowflake for early winter. But um, in looking at that, that was just so complicated that I need to step back and reevaluate the techniques that are used and try to find a maybe not a better way to do it but a different way to approach it so that it's it lends itself to exposure on YouTube and being able to complete that it was confusing me to be honest with you so we've got a lot of great plans for 2024 and like I said we will continue to do two videos a week but we're going to just swap up how they are. I found that running two projects with vi new videos every week was just a little taxing. So I need to kind of step back a little bit and focus some on what I enjoy doing and what I need to get done and bring you along with that and share some of the techniques on it, but yet still have new projects that I know everyone out there is interested in a new project. And if it were humanly possible to bring you a new project every Friday, I would do that. But there's no staff helping me and I don't have unlimited time to do that. So that's not very feasible. But we will do our best to give you projects that will move quickly. Okay, that's what we go. I think we have a plan for 2024 and I'm really excited about it and uh, we will just get going on it and see how it works if we need to readjust we will as always i thank you so much for joining us and supporting the channel please be sure to like our video and subscribe if you hit that little button it will pop up on youtube every time a new video is um, published right now those are going to be wednesdays and fridays and we'll see you next week here at the Shamrock Quilt Studio. Thanks again. Have a happy new year.